Good afternoon, friends, family, neighbors, and strangers. Uh, for those that do not know me, my name is Roger Bowman, and I've been working very full-time in the fitness and wellness industry and space for the last 19 years. And I, I, got, I have to say, like some of the more frustrating things that I am observing, or maybe I should say not observing, as it revolves around the whole pandemic and coronavirus and everything is I, I don't see us giving the, what I feel is deserved attention to um, what we can do to boost our body's natural defense systems or our immune system. So I figured that it was necessary to kind of chime in and put my two cents uh, as it revolves around that. So there is quite a bit that goes into um, you know, our immune system and with each person and our, you know, our body's ability to fight infection um, and keep our immune system thriving. Um, obviously our lifestyle and our eating habits and how well we're you know, feeding our bodies or the toxins that we may be putting in our bodies, obviously those are foundational things. But I'm going to speak to what I feel is more of the uh, average American from a supplemental standpoint and some, I guess, basics of what we can do um, to hopefully boost our immune systems to the best of our abilities with the limited knowledge that most of us do have. So some of the more effective uh, supplements, and I'll just kind of run through uh, what I feel is some of like the, the top, some of the top things, uh, supplements. So one of the, the, the first ones that I would suggest and, and recommend is uh, what's called silver biotics. It's essentially um, colloidal silver minerals. It's a combination of micro parts uh, with a, a, a slew of minerals. And this, this comes in a liquid form. So getting something like this with an oil of oregano in a liquid form as well, and maybe mixing the two together and then and when you do take it, you kind of, uh, you just let it swish around in your mouth uh, and you're essentially letting it absorb what's, kind of, what's traditionally been referred to as a sublingual approach. So the goal uh, with doing this is to hopefully, and this is in comparison to taking oral supplements like a tablet or a capsule, it's, it's to bypass the digestive uh, system, which for most Americans, our digestive systems are jacked up and they're, they're effed up. Uh, because we eat like shit and we consume a bunch of garbage. Um, I can't tell you how many people I talk to that you know, they're, they're having a bowel movement maybe every couple days. That's not good. And a lot of that, again, is, and I'm not going to go into deep detail with regards to diet and lifestyle and all that. So, but again, colloidal silver and oil of oregano, um, you know, take it in a liquid form. Again, let it, let it go around the mouth, let it absorb some lingually, you know, swish it around for 30, maybe 60 seconds. Uh, until you kind of can't take it anymore and then just just swallow. It's probably not going to be a pleasant taste, um, but again, that's going to be your best method of getting the best absorption. Um, another thing is vitamin C. Now, there's a lot of different forms of vitamin C. Most of us know it's vitamin C for immune system, um, <clears throat> but what's called a liposomal vitamin C, preferably also in a liquid form, doing you know, taking the same approach as I just mentioned with the uh, colloidal minerals, um, that's probably going to be, for the average person, the best approach for getting vitamin C absorbed and into the system in the most effective way. Now, if you must go with uh, a capsule or a tablet oral form, um, your best bet there is going to be getting what's called a buffered form of vitamin C, which you'll sometimes, if you look on to find details, see it, calcium ascorbic. Um, so buffered is, um, it's more gentle on the stomach. So for those that have uh, or a sensitive stomach or you get upset uh, with large amounts of vitamin C, so you're taking you know, uh, a couple grams or a couple thousand milligrams at, you know, at, a, at a pop. Uh, for some, that is a little bit irritating to their stomach. So a buffered form uh, is probably going to agree with you a little bit better. Now, if you must, you could always do just your old school ascorbic acid vitamin C as well. Some of us can get away with that. Uh, so vitamin C. Um, another one, and I've always liked to recommend this, uh, is what's called NAC for short. 
NAC. NAC is short for a long drawn out name, uh, it's amino acid called N acetyl L cysteine. Um, so, the N acetyl form of cysteine is a more effective form, a more readily usable form, if you will, by the body that it can then uh, utilize to make endogenous glutathione. Now, glutathione, which is also classified as amino acid, is arguably the body's strongest antioxidant. So, you will also see, because that's, that's the end goal, guys. You take NAC to get your glutathione levels up. Um, and that assists the body in so many ways. I mean, liver detox, uh, any upper res respiratory uh, issues or concerns, it's just going to do a great job of boosting your body's immune system and, again, detoxification pathways. So, you will see glutathione uh, supplements. Anything that's oral, do not waste your money. There's been study after study showing that oral glutathione supplementation is it, it's just it's not gonna it's not gonna get through the digestive system and, and you're not gonna get anything out of it. Now, you can, which I like to do uh, when I can, is you can get injectable forms of glutathione. However, that's not practical, nor is it uh, applicable for the average person. So, I mean, it's kind of irrelevant to, to even mention injectable glutathione, which is why I'm saying get NAC to then support your body's natural ability to produce endogenous natural production of glutathione on its own. Okay, so NAC, N acetyl L cysteine, good stuff. Vitamin D, chalciferol, vitamin D3 to be uh, specific. Um, getting uh, sufficient amounts of vitamin D is so incredibly critical. Vitamin D is is almost considered by some uh, like a hormone in itself because it just it, it assists with so many different pathways within, within the body. Um, you know, uh, immune system, of course, which is what we're talking about here, but it also supports uh, a, health, a healthy endocrine system or your hormones. Uh, it's a precursor in so many different things, and it's just so essential for our well-being. So getting a good dose of vitamin D, especially at this time, spring, fingers crossed, hopefully it's coming sooner than later. The sun actually is peeking out and shining a little bit today, but we, um, we're not quite to our warm weather yet. And with that being said, a lot of us are not getting outside and getting enough sunshine. But a little bit of extra vitamin D, especially uh, with the concerns revolving around our immune system and trying to keep that thriving and keep that up as best possible, cannot go wrong with a little extra vitamin D. Um, next is uh, the mineral zinc. So, you know, taking a little bit of extra zinc, probably not a bad idea. Be cautious not to take too much vitamin, uh, or I'm sorry, but the mineral zinc. Uh, if you take too much zinc, you can create copper imbalances and other things. So, for the average person, 30, 50 milligrams a day is probably sufficient. Um, and just like other minerals or, and or vitamins, antioxidants, certain forms are more superior and therefore more absorbed than others. So when it does come to zinc, getting a picolinate form or what's called a chelated form of zinc is going to be much more efficient and effective uh, from an absorption standpoint. And when we talk about absorption, of course, we're talking about the, you know, how effective it is for you and your immune system. So those are probably, I mean, I could, I could give a lot more. God, I could talk for the next hour on all of this and especially as we move down the pathway of talking about nutrition and lifestyle and all of that. But, you know, for, I, for most, you know, easy things that we can kind of get on the cheap, we can implement into our daily regimen at this time. Um, those are some of the, the I, in my opinion, some of the top recommendations. And now one, one more honorable mention, if you will, is elderberry, which Sambucus nigra, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, elderberry uh, has been studied uh, although I think more studies are needed, but there are some promising studies that that does help, um, you know, with regards to flu and upper respiratory and all that good stuff. So, I mean, for the cost, elderberry may be something to consider as well. Uh, but again, you know, you know, as a recap, the the colloidal silver minerals, um, the oil of oregano, liposomal vitamin C. Again, those those first three are in liquid form. Again, switch around your mouth. Uh, NAC, which is N-acetyl-L-cysteine, vitamin D in a D3 chalciferol form, 
and a small dose of zinc, probably 30, 50 milligrams. So uh, take that and run with it, guys. I would strongly recommend to focus on yourself and your immune system uh, because if you have a weak immune system and you're not taking care of yourself, you're that much more prone to you know having something from the outside come in and you know hammer your body and your body if your body's defense systems are not strong enough to to fight anything and this is not just pertaining to coronavirus and all the stuff going on this is just this is real talk this is just general everyday wellness type of talk here so um again you know let's let's not take our health for granted and uh let's do what we can to keep our immune systems uh up and thriving guys so i hope this was helpful and uh, thank you for listening to me ramble on. And if anybody has questions, by all means, uh, you know, feel free to reach out, give me a shout, and, and I will sincerely do my best to help uh, where I can. So thanks, guys. Take care and be safe.